Um, so let's go see if uh, the players are ready at the feature match and see if we could uh, get to start with some aggressiveness. Uh, so mm -hmm. Mike rolls an 8, and this is the most important part. Ooh, Snake Eye, that's not a good sign <laughs> when you're trying to play for top 8. So do we have Joe's, Joe's list? I think... We had him on camera previously. I don't think we have his list quite yet, but okay. uh, we can go grab it in a second. Well, see, so I think that there are going to be some cards in this matchup which are, are good for Delver, which a lot of times they don't play. So I would think that uh, cards like Days are going to increase in value, and cards like Vapor Snag and Snap are going to be surprisingly good here because there's not a lot of interest the battlefield effects on Mike's side, and being able to disrupt some of the pump spells or the uh, enchantments like Rancor is going to be a job that's much better suited to cards like Snap than it is cards like Counterspell or Deprive. Yeah. All right, so I got Joe's list here, and it looks like he has two Vapor Snags, two Snaps, and two Mutagenic Growths as sort of his way to interact with the board. He's also running a one of Pestermite and only three Spire Golems, so not a ton of interaction, excuse me, with, with the board, but um, two Vapor Snags I think is more than, than a lot of these decks run, so we'll Yeah, and what see. about for Mike? So Mike, uh, Mike's got a lot of twos in this list, so he's got two Vault Scourge, two Garrick's Companion, two Mutagenic Growth, two Nest Invader, two River Boa, two Silana Ledgewalk Ledgewalker. Yeah, it looks like he started hot with a one drop. Uh, I'm actually not familiar with that art. Do you know what that is? So this is Young Wolf. This is like ah. one of the best creatures in this deck um, because it's a 1-1 one, one and it has Undying. So it becomes a 2-2. Two, two. And a lot of, you know, a lot of decks in the format are playing stuff like Chainer's Edict or Firebolt and Young Wolf just is like one of the creatures that, that ignores the two for one value that is inherent in those removal spells. Okay. Um, but yeah, Mike is Falls gonna have access. With, uh, like, oh, oh, two of them. Two Skargan Pit Skulks. And these creatures are essentially unblockable to a vast majority of Joe's list here because uh, they can't be blocked by creatures with power less than Skargan Pit Skull. So, so not only is it a 2 2, can't be blocked by any of the fairies currently. Wow, Rancor hits the. <laughs> Is on the battlefield. It's gonna get spell stuttered. All right, but if you look at the Stompy list, like right now, Joe cannot really trade for value at all. He can't block either of the Pit Skulks, and if he blocks the Young Wolf, he gives him a two-two. Yeah. Oh man. Okay, so three drop. It's gonna be a Spire Golem. Wow. Spire Golem for three mana. So this is this is a fast Spire Golem. Has got to be one of the things that Joe needs to, to win this game. That's what I'm going for. That Rancor would have helped a lot, but it looks like Mike's not going to be able to have access to it. Yeah. All right, uh, so Joe's at 14, so he's well, got some life to play with here. He's tapped out, and he has a Mind of Vast Wood in hand, so he could actually elect to either go upstairs or trade with the Spargo, which I think he'll elect to do. Uh, between that and the other... Does he have any other pump spell in his hand? Uh, he has a Hunger of the Howl Pack, or Howl Pack of the Hunger. I don't know whatever that card's called. Um, which has Morbid and allows you to put three plus one plus one counters on a creature. So here it is on the Pit Skull. So I assume that Mike's going to just hold up some mana here and sort of... Nope, nope, okay. Sort of open himself up to a bounce spell on the Pit Skull. So he's made a 5-5, five five, but it looks like Joe's holding a Vapor Snag. Oh, wow, what a blowout. Yeah. So as long as Joe doesn't wait for him to untap, he's going to get the opportunity to sort of undo how large this creature is. If he lets him untap, he opens himself up to Vines the Vastwood okay, here. Let's, well, for Joe's sake, let's hope he has something like a Dispel in hand to protect him a little bit better. And that's Ooh. a second Vine, so that's uh, gonna help Mike a lot. All right. So let's see if Mike decides to get in with the Young Wolf too. It doesn't, it would just grow it, so it's not too good, but. All right. So let's see, it looks like Mike also has a Ground Swell, so he didn't, that has landfall. It's plus two, plus two, landfall, plus four, plus four. Mm -hmm. So he could potentially grow the other pit lord to unblockable. So here's going to be a Vapor Snag. Going after the big, um, the big pit skulk. But vines of that, Spell Star Scry is going to take care of the vines, but then the second vine is going to punch that through. Wow, that was, that was a great, great drop for Mike. Uh, I think you already let the spell Spellstutter Sprite resolve. Yeah. Cannot block. 
All right, down to six. I mean, this is this is the mono green plan here. And the pit skull too big even to allow um, mutagenic growth to to block with the spider golem. Would only make it a four or five. Mm -hmm. Yeah, quick shelf from Joe. He just needs a bounce spell. That's all he's looking for now. Bounce spells and more cantrips are kind of the only thing that matter. What other bounce spells does he have available at his disposal? So we he's saw got the two, two snaps. paper snacks and two snaps. Yep. So when Cloud of Fairies was in the format, four snaps was a, was a must. But now... Yeah, still quite a few... Uh, all right. Well, a bit of a premature concession, in your opinion? Um... Yeah, technically he had one more turn, but Mike did have another. He did have another pump spell in his hand, so. Okay. And uh, here we're gonna go to the sideboard, see what these players have to work with. Joe is presumably gonna be on the play. Um, do you like the dispel type effects against the pump? Um. They might come in. I think you can probably shave like the ninja of the deep hours in this matchup. Oh yeah, your creatures are, not, are getting blocked most likely. Yeah, you're sort of on the defense, and yeah, even if it's on the ground, like it's not going to be able to attack more than one time. Um, so the spell's probably okay. Coral net for sure comes in. Probably serrated arrows. Oh yes, yeah, serrated arrows. Uh, and I guess m maybe psychic barrier. I'm not sure the counter spells are where you want to be. Mm -hmm. Corona, um, if it's not coming in here, I'm not sure why you're uh, having it in your board. Right, totally. Um, interestingly, serrated arrows, have you heard of the phrase foam decapped? Uh, no. So back uh, during Necro Block, uh, when Necropotence was good, Ice Age Block, uh, Homelands was the third set uh, at the time in that block. It's no longer part of that block. And uh, it was, the set was so underpowered that w the DCI required that standard decks play at least five cards from each uh, expansion that was legal and standard uh, because Homelands, specifically because Homelands was so bad. And Serrated Arrows was one of the few good cards from Homelands, free playable ones, so uh, Serrated Arrows saw a lot of play in that expansion. Nice. Other uh, Homelands all-stars include Autumn Willow and Isan Shade. <laughs> but it's pretty cool here to see Serrated Arrow still uh, having an impact in 2016, albeit in the proper format. All right, so on Mike's side, I expect him to bring in the Epic Confrontations. I think that's a card that gives fight. Yeah, um, I, I certainly love a good fight. And then, although he might not, because it kind of opens him up to, to bounce spells. Oh, yeah. But, and it's a sorcery. Yeah, that might not come in. He's definitely going to bring in the gut shots. He's definitely going to bring in the scatter shot archers, and he's probably going to take out like the Garrick's companion, the Meyer boa, um, some of the less impactful creatures. And scatter shot archers is just a house in this yeah, format. Yeah, this is uh, amazing in this matchup. Yeah, I was playing mono white spirits for a while, and scatter shot archer mixed with Quarian ranger just meant they can just like oh, sweep man. the skies like multiple times per turn on both your turn and their turn. Was, oh was, man, that 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 is. Good deck building. Stuff of nightmares. I'd seen this being discussed in Legacy Elves, although I don't think it ever quite made the cut. Uh, so let's see if we could uh, see what's going on in this match. Uh, players have picked up their sevens. It looks like they've probably shuffled and cut each other's decks. And what do these players have to work with? I see three fours, four fours from Mike. I don't think he's possibly keeping that. Uh, I think he probably keeps this. He's got, a, he's got a young wolf, which is one of his better threats. And he has a Scattershot Archer, which is one of his better control and threat cards. So okay, that certainly uh, changes the information. And you're right, he does indeed keep. And that another Young Wolf off the top? Yeah. Okay. So basically what he's looking for is a Quirion Ranger to just turn this thing into like a machine gun for the skies. All right. So this is like got to be one of the strengths of Mono Green is, is Joe's holding up mana for counter magic, but Mike's just going to play two threats. Mm -hmm. And even if, say, Joe had played a Spell Stutter Sprite there, I think Spell Stutter Sprite has an Enters the Battlefield ability. So he could uh, use the Scattershot Archer in response, and then when uh, oh. Spell Stutter Sprite's ability resolves, he would have zero fairies in play. So you could yeah. counter a Tormod's crit, but not a creature. That is really sick. And actually, um, I heard a really disgusting interaction that involved an Ancestral Vision coming off to spend <laughs> and a uh, Spell Stutter Sprite, because that trigger is actually mandatory. Yeah, the the ancestral vision. No, the um, the spell starter sprite. So if you get it to zero, and the only card on the stack is a, um, 
is an ancestral vision, there's likely not going to be any other zero casting cost spells on the battlefield. Why would you cast a spell stutter into an ancestral vision? If you could vision? bait some kind of, uh, let's say, no. if you could force some kind of stack fight. But oh, that I see, seem I see. To be relevant here. Here's Definitely a not. Uh, spire golem uh, hitting the battlefield. Okay. And Mike fired off a mutagenic growth, which I was a little surprised at, um, but just sort of did it in the face of not being blocked by the spire golem. Yeah, that's interesting. He does shoot to get aggressive, and he paid full retail on that. Yeah. All right, so he does. He did leave in the, the ninjas, and I think that's right. I mean, I, I wouldn't expect him to board out all of them, but they're certainly not powerhouse in this matchup. Yeah, so let's see. What would he really want here from Mike? That clearing range? Oh, well, Rancor's not too bad either. Rancor's pretty good, and he's going to be able to get get it in without threat of spell starter sprite, although, yeah. you know, he's, again, a little immune to that right now. So you put on the young wolf, right? You want to incentivize. Oh, that's an excellent yep. play. Um, Vapor snag on the young wolf in response to the rancor is going to cause it to fizzle and hit the graveyard. Yep. And that's that's kind of the game plan here for Joe, I guess. Um, not too much else you can do in this tempo matchup other than get the bounce spells at the best possible times. All right. So Mike's thinking about lining up the block here. Fires off another pump spell. Yeah. <laughs> I think Mike's, Mike's happy enough with this trade. I mean, That's Joe's true. paying two life, and he's not drawing a card, and, and Mike's going to get the Undying trigger, so not, not the worst. And your opponent also paid for extra mana, so I guess uh, you're not too unhappy. Yeah, yeah. All right, and here's a Spire Golem, now one mana. Uh, I'm not sure if Mike is thinking about bringing in the Disenchants for game three. Oh, that's interesting. Well, some of his disenchant effects are the natural states, which uh, even though Spire Golem often only costs three or less to play, uh, does not actually get targeted by natural state. Hmm. Yeah. All right, so we saw there, it looks like Mike fired off a groundswell in response to the Spire Golem block. Joe countered it, uh, and so the young wolf died to the block. All right. This is one of the problems with the ninja in this matchup. Uh, Joe's got to decide whether or not he wants to attack into this 2 2 Nettle Sentinel. Using a, a bounce spell here seems like you know he could potentially get more value out of it later on. And just decides to leave them both back on defense. I think Mike drew a force for the turn, so he's getting a bit flooded. Yeah, he's a bit flooded. I you know I, I think it was a good keep, though. He had a card that was very relevant in the matchup. It didn't line up very well against Joe's draw. Yeah. So Joe last turn had the option of sending a Spire Golem at Mike. Mike was Hoban at the time. Uh, he, I think you probably don't want to get aggressive in this matchup, but at the same time, if Mike tried to double block to blow him out with a snap, would you have liked sending in right there? Or would you like to play in defense? Well, there's no reason for Mike to double block. The ninja, because he would just throw the nettle sentinel in front of it. Another force off the top for Mike, and he is falling behind in this uh, word state. Here's the double secrets. That's going to be painful. Mike really needs to draw a Korean Ranger or another scatter shot archer. Yeah, Mike definitely has some time to draw out of this, but you know, this is the strength of the blue delver list is that Joe is looking at a lot of cards. Yeah, you're playing a lot of excellent cantrips, um, which is always great. Oh, you know, Mike has a Meyer boa. On two river boas, so uh, that can help him uh, get back in it. Oh, that's a scatter shot archer. Yep. Maybe a little bit too late, but. Well, it's still good because we also know that the top card of Joe's library is another Delver, so once both those archers get online, he's going to at least be able to clear the skies of Delvers. Then he just has to, the Spire Golems to worry about. Yeah. Not that he has great answers for those right now. He might fire off one of the snaps here just to like allow his Delver to hit one or two more times. Oh yeah, that's an interesting play. And he's gonna get aggressively, try to trim off half of Joe's life to uh, Mike's life total. Yeah, so here if he if he snaps the scatter shot archer and just plays another Delver, he's not in any immediate danger of dying. Mike only has one card in hand. Do you think he's potentially trying to play around some kind of protection effect? I don't know if Mono Green typically runs those, but I think if I'm not. Joe here, I'm casting Snap, and if you get Vines, then you're not really in worse shape than you were before. Yeah. 
I agree. And then here's another forest right off the top. Uh, mono green mages love the nature and love the forest, <laughs> and the nature loves them back, but maybe not what he was quite looking for in this game. Yeah, so this is looking a little grim for Mike. Feeling a bit blue, possibly. All right, he scoops right. it up. So that's going to knot this up at one apiece like this uh, scoreboard indicated with our wonderful ability of foresight. Uh, so now <laughs> we're going to go straight into game three. Uh, these guys are going to like consider the sideboards once again. Uh, so we saw the scatter archer uh, shot archer, and that probably makes a lot of sense in retrospect. Uh, in, sorry, this period, but did not seem quite that good on that type of board state. Uh, granted, Mike did get a bit flooded. Do you think anything yeah. changes? Well, I think that Mike could be tempted to bring in the gleeful sabotages since the spire golems played such a major role. But we know that Joe only has three, and he's not actually even playing uh, Bone Splitter, which a lot of Delverless run. Oh, so. I don't you know. I think he might anticipate serrated arrows. I don't know how commonly that is played in soft proper side. I really haven't seen a lot of serrated arrows for Delver, just because four mana ends up kind of being where they want to end the game, not necessarily play a control card. So I don't know. If I guess if in my Mike's, if I'm in Mike's place, I'm not sure exactly what he brought in. But again, it's hard to dilute your deck and take out like some of these beatdown creatures for cards that you know, don't necessarily turn the tide. You know, like Gutshot's kind of a value, or not a value card, but it's, you know, it's a one for one. Yeah. Uh, and it only gets the one ones. And Tangle, you can't bring in Tangle against Delver. They're just not committing enough to their attack phase. Yeah, it's, uh, when you're usually offensive, uh, it's just not gonna get you a whole lot of value. Um, and, by the time they're able to start swinging at you, they usually want to leave some resources back and you're kind of in trouble anyway. Yeah, like Delver's kind of playing this plan where every turn they attack you for like three or, or two, but they're always doing it, you know, at no cost. They're holding up counter magic or they have blockers. Um, you know, you, you're bringing in Tangle for like the mono white or goblins list where they're having to like sacrifice some things and, and use some pump spells. So I'd be surprised that came in. So uh, I'd kind of expect things to say, Pretty much the same, assuming they boarded how we said they would. Mm -hmm. So what's at stake here? If Mike wins this one, he is probably going to get the number two seed, maybe number three, depending on whether tables have to play out. Mm -hmm. Joe, I don't know if he can necessarily make top eight. Some things are going to have to break in his favor. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly, uh, it depends on what the tables above him do. All right, so this is kind of a medium hand from Mike, but I don't think there's any chance he puts it back. Yeah, he's got a one mana two two, and he's gonna follow up with a Garrick's companion, and then start hoping that his pump spells are good enough. And Joe starts with a fairy miscreant. All right, I think. Yeah, he just the gut shot. Mike doing it on his turn with untapped mana to play around days, I assume. Yeah, that's uh, pretty heads up. When you have a free effect like Gut Shot, Submerge, and some other formats, mm -hmm. it's often wise to just go ahead and do that. Oh, but then this, he gets actually slightly punished for this because that plays into mutagenic growth because now that's a 3 3 blocker for his most of his turn. Yeah, interesting. Uh, so this is a, is that still Hulana Ledge Walker? No, that's Nettle Sentinel. And then he just played a Garrick's Companion, which is a 3 ah. 2 Trampling Beast. What a beast. I'm a, little, you know, I'm a little surprised it's still in, just because it's not uh, incredibly fast, and I guess trample's relevant, but it also doesn't interact with a bunch of pliers very well. All right, so there, there we do see the Gleeful Sabotage. So, so Mike did bring those in. Yeah, Gleeful Sabotage, one of these interesting uh, cards with the Convoke, oh, sorry. Uh, it, it's, it's kind of replicate, but I can't remember exactly what it was. Okay. Spire. There we go. What do you think about Mike's play here? So he, he used the vines of the Vastwood while Joe was tapped out. Um, presumably to play around a bounce spell or a counter spell, but kind of just using it like a burn spell. Yeah, I, I think there's certainly some merit to that. It seemed a bit aggressive to me, but you know, Joe is at nine lives, so. Yeah. Who knows? Uh, certainly, Mike is going to have to put his. Uh... All right, so this uh, wow. Tutu is going to go block that Garrick's companion. I think uh, you're happy with this trade. 
uh, you still have creatures on board, and uh, you have an answer to Spire Golem that comes yeah. off the battlefield. I'm very surprised. I mean, this is a very aggressive attack from Mike, and I really like it. Um, it's essentially just a bluff, though, sending an Aquarian Ranger. Yeah. Although, if uh, Mike took it on the chin, he would be at four, no, let's see. I mean, he would still have a 3-2 yeah. Trampler, but Joe would still have a Ninja. Yeah. Um, um, I like that. Yeah, it's Mike, only worked out. Mike's really played this matchup in sort of an all-in kind of way, you know. Fairy Miscreant and a Delver of Secrets can hit the battlefield for Joe. He's going to need to stabilize. He's at five life right now. Okay. Oh, that's an awesome draw for Joe. Uh, sorry, that that Metal Sentinel should be tapped right now, but uh, I don't. Think no, he untapped happen. it with Query and Ranger uh, oh. on the end of his turn. Did he bounce a land to do that? Because I yeah. thought he had three lands. He had three okay. lands. He bounced one and replayed it. Okay, great. All right, so Joe's thinking about. Double blocking. This is interesting because Joe, I think his block last turn made me think he's playing around a pump spell on Quirion Ranger. So double blocking this turn doesn't play around that pump spell. So it's kind of an interesting line. Heads up play by Mike, jamming that Rancor right back on the Quirion Ranger. This way, a pump spell still allows him to get Rancor back in his hand. And uh, Joe looks like he's a little bit choked on mana here. Yeah, this is a tough spot to be in for the blue doggos. Yeah, especially if you're behind and trying to rely on maybe like counter spell, spell sweaters, right? Yeah. And he does have... So he has the mutagenic growth. Uh, but interestingly, it's going to save him two damage, but then take two damage. So. Yeah, this uh, card is pretty much offline at the moment. Uh, what do you value more here more if you're Joe? He's going to double block. Uh, I don't love the double block. I think it's a safer line, but I don't think it's one that can get him back in the game, unfortunately. I mean, being at two isn't really functionally any different, especially with a Rancor in play. Yeah. Uh, and... Oh, and this is going to be... This is where the uh, Gleeful Sabotage is going to take the game. Wow. And he has a pump spell, so... And the handshake. Yeah, Joe stumbled on mana for a couple turns there, and then Mike took advantage. Yeah. So we feel sabotage uh, going after one of the few targets in Joe's deck, one of the most threatening, the Spire Golem. I gotta say, you know, I think we've seen some players today sort of fire off spells earlier than I expect uh, and then get punished for, for losing the value. And, and Mike this time, I mean, he played his pump spells as if they were, as if he was playing mono red, just throwing chain lightnings at the face. And it worked out. Yeah. Uh, so let's see, uh, we got about 26 minutes left. Let's see, we, let's get back in the booth, maybe get Mike Kilo for a little bit of a winner's interview, uh, but it's pretty sweet. We got a really fast match. Uh, yeah. You want to go see if Mike's available? I'll uh, maybe I'll interview him, and then we'll see if um, we get a backup match. Sure. Terrific. So uh, we're going to just go cut really quickly to the standings uh, so you get a good view of what's going on, what uh, we might expect to see. So Mike right here, he was the lowest 4-1, but he's likely going to jump into second place. Uh, possibly uh, the 7-8 table may have something to say about that, uh, depending on whether they need to play this out or not.
Hey guys, uh, we're back here in the booth. Uh, I'm joined Hi. here by Mike Kiesel, who we just saw on camera triumphant with his mono green, uh, mono green deck. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us why you moved on to that? Like Russ Martin was pretty excited about that, particularly because of the Delver matchup. Yeah, I thought the Delver matchup was probably pretty good. Um, I was torn between Stompy or like mono black today. Okay. So. Just thinking, like, either be aggressive or, like, overwhelmed with powerful removal. I felt like the edge was towards Stompy because I feel like it has a slight edge in, against Mono Black. Like, Mono Black has, like, some really powerful cards, but also, like, they're spending two mana to kill your one mana guy. Okay, yeah. And, and just kind of, like, two for ones that way. Young, Young Wolf is a really powerful oh, yeah. card. A dying card to sub. A dying card is like a uh, nest invader. They like just make an 0 1 Scion to sack to their edict effect. Um, but against Delver, you know, you, get, you can get like a very quick start, get underneath them, like you saw there. Yeah. Um, it seemed like Spire Golem was really the only creature that gave you problems in that matchup. Yeah, that's actually why game three I decided to bring in two of the Gleeful Sabotage. You know, uh, Zach is much more experienced than I am about Popper, and we are discussing sideboard strategies, Yeah. and we didn't think it was worthwhile, and then game three, I was like, oh, let's put in the Disenchant Fix. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what I thought. Like, I, for game two, I've ordered in the three Gut Shots and the three Scattershot Archers, because, I mean, Scattershot Archer is in there specifically for this match. Mm -hmm. um, doing one damage to Flyers is just yeah. amazing. You kept a pretty uh, mediocre hand on the back of Scattershot Archer game yeah. three, and then you got flooded, unfortunately. Yeah. So it didn't look that good there, but it's pretty good in this matchup. Yeah, I mean, they have so many 1-1 uh, one, one Flyers, like between Fairy Miscreant, um, you know, uh, Spell Sutter Sprite, and I guess that's the, the main 1-1s, yeah. one but also, like, if you get two scatter shots, you can kill Delvers and stuff like that. Um, just able to really punish them for that. Gut shot's good too. Like they have a lot of one toughness guys. Um, yeah, the only the only problem card was Spire Golem, and yeah, I kind of kept a, you know four four mana hand. That's kind of too mu too much, but you know if you draw good, um, you might be able to draw out of that. Yeah. But one thing in. really interesting, I think Zach is maybe a more controlling player than you by nature, and he thought like you were really aggressive in using the pump spells as burn, and it worked out very well. I, th I think you have to. I think you have to uh, really put them on the back foot. Yeah. Like um, they're they're like they have like, this natural tempo strategy, right? And you need to like keep them on the back foot. Like he's in the end there, he was forced to, like chump double double block just to like. Yeah preserve his life total mm -hmm. um, and that's just because I was a little aggressive early you know they have a lot of ways to counter stuff so you know if it's just a groundswell or something or mutagenic growth I just want to get in some extra damage here and there um, early because I want them to start to care about their life total as yeah. soon as possible well that's pretty cool um, glad you got that win uh, nice. that locks you up for top eight probably with a pretty high seed yeah um, hopefully I don't know if your opponent necessarily could have uh, made it with a win, but he, ha he had a I win. Th I probably. think so, because uh, actually table four, it looked like table four drew as well. Okay. Uh, one really weird thing, oh, they drew? Yeah. Oh, that's quite interesting. Yeah. Okay, so it looks like we got a backup match. Uh, Zach uh, diligently went ahead and found us something so we could bring you some more live action. Cool. Uh, you need to take a break because you yeah. just uh, fought and uh, had a really... Yeah, those are, that turned out to be a pretty close match yeah. in the end, I think. Yeah. Well, uh, congrats. Thank you. I uh, <laughs> hope to see you on camera some more during the elimination rounds. And yeah. good luck. Yeah, thank you. Yeah.